not so high right now. We should be alright. It's a pretty good flow to it, though. I grew up thinking if I could just drive a truck around in the woods or being out in, in nature, that'd be a perfect job, and I kind of found that here at the district. Being able to airboat to different lands, drive out in, in portions of the Withlacoochee or boat down at the river's length is just absolutely amazing to me. Out here, I'm relaxed. It's just a wonderful place to be and to spend time, and it's amazing to me that I'm able to do that. The Withlacoochee River has about a 2,000 square mile watershed, which means this is the area, the portion surrounding the river that when it rains, it could potentially flow into and feed the river. I'm Dr. Mark Fulkerson, a senior professional engineer with the Southwest Florida Water Management District. The Withlacoochee is where I call home. It's where I grew up. It's where I was born and raised, developing a great love for the outdoors. Currently, I'm the project manager for the Withlacoochee River Watershed Initiative. As you paddle down the river, you never know what you might encounter. It might be a snake, a turtle, a gator, a bird. And this is GS 108. The Withlacoochee River Watershed Initiative is a really a multi-year effort that is designed to better understand the dynamics of the river and its watershed. Okay, go out the center line. To identify how certain alterations may or may not have affected the river system and to try to identify different ways that we can better manage the river. Got it. The Withlacoochee River is 160 miles long. It begins in the Green Swamp and passes through all or part of eight different counties before eventually discharging into the Gulf of Mexico. This is one of the few rivers that runs northward. The name Withlacoochee is derived from a Creek Indian word meaning little big water, which likely defines the high and low fluctuations that the river naturally experiences. Understanding the fact that the river is gonna fluctuate low and high is a, is a critical component. This is a pretty good indication that water's been this high likely from the 2004 hurricanes. In addition to these natural fluctuations, man has changed the river over the last several decades and really over the last hundred years in an effort to transform its natural function into one that benefited private needs. And really they were in, in the name of navigation or certain industries like the phosphate industry or timber or citrus. Because the Withlacoochee River has experienced extreme highs and extreme lows in, in really the last several decades, and also because there were many man-made alterations to the river system, because of that, there are a lot of public concerns. The Southwest Florida Water Management District has been working on this effort since 2006. Really, the, the work began six years prior to that in, in the year 2000 when the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers began looking at the entire watershed and realizing we needed to come up with a comprehensive tool to analyze the entire system as a whole. How can we build a tool of the entire watershed? How can we look at all 2,100 square miles as a whole instead of just focusing on one area? we realized we really needed to map out the entire river system. The accuracy of a model is only as good as the data we put in, and for this effort, we really went above and beyond collecting probably 70,000 bottom elevations all the way down the Withlacoochee River to play a place into this model to, to characterize it accurately. In order to gather the information we've needed for this effort, I've basically walked or boated the entire stretch of the Withlacoochee River gathering the data, and that took over two summers. was really kind of like a pioneering in a sense. Probably not many people that have seen that portion of the Withlacoochee River. And it looks like the river's come up a little bit since yesterday. It was difficult, you know, we, many times we just kind of have to traverse ahead a ways, walk through the, walk of the banks a long ways to try to figure out where the river goes. It's not very well defined in many portions of the Green Swamp. As we marched down the river, you know, we were locating our position by GPS. We were using the survey rod, putting it down to the bottom of the river to get that elevation. Many days, you know, just chopping along the banks of the river so that we could have that clear line of sight. And we were walking from 8.30 until dark just about every day. One of the main goals of this study is to get a better understanding of the entire river system as a whole and to be able to use that understanding to make management decisions that are gonna enhance the resources. There were many meetings, public workshops, working groups, initiatives, that, that brought the public in and together to kind of identify what are the issues in the river system. That's right on. Right? The first step in identifying those issues was to build this comprehensive model of the entire system. And so we've done that, and now we're able to address those concerns. Really 19 critical issues kind of stand out. We're going to look at each of these scenarios separately and some in conjunction with each other to try to determine what impact those changes on the river may or may not have. Because of the many complexities of the river and its surrounding watershed, it's not just a one-person job. It's taken the effort of many people working together at the district and including the community 
It's important for us to protect the environment because it's a finite resource and it's up to us to protect it for generations to come.